Hello, how are you? I'm Edgar Fernandez from Pharma Chemical Safety, now Sufficient Limited, located in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. So today we're going to talk about an um, incident study case uh, related with uh, vacuum tray dryers. So only to remind you, uh, we have Sufficient has a mission of protecting people's lives and reducing incidents. Um, myself, I hold the um, Professional Engineer Designations in the Province of Ontario and Alberta. I hold the certificate, the certification of Canadian Registered Safety Professional and Certified Safety Professional in the United States. Well, the case is on the pharmachemical industry. So I designed this case to see various uh, aspects of uh, safety that we need to take in account when we have an uh, operation of uh, back, uh, drying in operations that involve vacuum tray dryers. So our company XYZ has various stages to produce ABC finished product. So one of the stages is transferring the intermediate product after filtration to a vacuum tray dryer. At this point, the material is called cake. So the procedure describes, um, describes this operation as follows. To st they start filtering the material from the reactor to the filtration equipment. They, they get the intermediate product after filtration that contains powder and solvent and the solvent that they were using was toluene that also is a non-conductive liquid. So the cake is transferred for the filtration equipment to the static uh, dissipation plastic bags manually. Uh, what they used to do that, they used a stainless steel scoop. Once the amount specified in the SOP is in the bag, they call this not a SOP, they call the master, ba master batch record. The operator proceeds to zip it. At the time of the incident, the operator put 11 bags in the vacuum tray, in the vacuum tray dryer room. The operator put one of the bags on the stainless steel table that has four rubber wheels on the bottom. He opened the bag, he grabbed the scoop to transfer the material to the trays of the dryer. He performed this step four times and suddenly he, oh, the flash fire occurred. The XYZ company created a team to investigate the root causes, the root causes, excuse me, to prevent the recurrence of these incidents. Yeah, so the team found the following. So the primary reason was static electricity that act as a source of energy to complete the fire triangle. Toluene, Vapor, the vapors of toluene is a fuel, the static is a source of energy, and oxygen is the element that, that always is present. The casual factor that contributes to this incident were part of the company um, CGMP's uh, safety policy, so the operator shall wear, uh, shall wear the following PPE. So coveralls, the composition of this the coverall was 85% polyester, 50% cotton, Latex gloves instead of ESD material, medical material gloves. The stainless steel table and the scoop were not grounded and bounded. And there was no evidence of the ESD certification of the plastic bag. Of the plastic bag. So this was a mere supposition by the management that this um, bag was, was uh, ESD. By procedure, the operator was wearing ESD safety shoes. However, the floor was not ESD. So not the operator could test the shoes neither. So they were they were wearing a uh, they were wearing uh, ESD shoes, but uh, they never tested. So there and the floor was was it ESD either? Excuse me. So there is no no way to to, to know with that, but it wasn't working at all. So the company XYZ never conducted a PHA. Therefore, the team had concerns about fire code compliance. So now it's a requirement, I think, that you need to have a DHA. It does hazard analysis, so does management program. So companies that they have, they, they have already a PSM. It's not, it's not hard for them to implement this type of uh, uh, measurements or uh, 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 initiatives. Um, I'm seeing in my experience that is for companies that they don't have liquids, the flammable liquids, so it's hard for them to implement these type of programs because they need they need to go for for, for the beginning uh, for 
companies they have the PSM already or the risk-based risk process safety. So only they add this component to the uh, to the to the pillar that is called uh, um, known your hazards, right? So they have the process safety information and they have the process hazard analysis. So pretty much it's, it, that means the DHA your or your dose management uh, safety program. So um, several intermediate products at this stage are hybrid mixtures. In this case, there are two aspects to consider. So at the beginning, the criteria which prevailed is to find, uh, is to, to take this uh, cake or this intermediate product as a flammable liquid, as flammable uh, vapors or take it as a flammable liquid. And start designing your operation in, 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 in that way. And also, as a, and then at the end, it's going to be combustible powder. So you need to check the uh, your electrical classification, which one is going to prevail. I think uh, according to their uh, NFE recommendation, it's going to prevail the uh, flammable liquid. Um, so the data you need to get from the flammable liquids, uh, we have talked about, uh, I talked about on uh, my last video, is uh, minimum ignition energy, add to ignition temperature, low explosion limit, and uh, limit oxygen concentration of the solvent. But also, according to the NFPA 64 standard for the, prevent, uh, for the prevention of fire and dust explosions from the manufacturing, proce uh, manufacturing processing and handling of combustible solids standard, says that you need to test your powder. So actually, one of my videos before, I, we talk about classification of combustible powder, so I, I, I won't touch too much on, on that, um, on which, uh, what, uh, what does it mean each one of the... Uh, of the parameters so you can watch that video uh, i have it's very comprehensive about these parameters so it's a go no go test is a minimum ignition energy limit oxygen concentration the dk charge the add ignition temperature the minimum ignition temperature that's a parameter you need to test at least for you to take these type of operations so in canada each province each province has its fire code so uh, you need to check that um, most of these fire codes on if I, the, I I would say all of them they refer when you have furnaces and ovens that they, that applies to these dryers is the NFPA 86 so you, you should consult that standard so in this case what the company did to improve the safety of these operations well the first they uh, they didn't measure the lack of oxygen concentration of the uh, of of the LEL concentration. So you can go in both ways, in two ways. One, you you can go to the LEL and say, okay, my LEL won't reach more than my back in trade dryer sorry won't reach more than 25% of LEL. But in this type of operations, for sure they're gonna go more than 25%. So the recommendation was go to make the atmosphere inert. So they install an oxygen sensor and then they 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 test the up the, the 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 solvent and the powder and they got the uh, limit oxygen concentration. They install a sensor and they go and they went actually 40% below what the LOC according to the NFPA 69. You have an oxygen sensor, it's 40% below the LOC. You don't have an oxygen sensor, it's below it's below it's 60% uh, below for LOC. So engineering review the thickness of the dryer wall to verify the necessity of explosion proof panel or venting. And in this case, the dryer was complying. In. If not, NF, uh, you need to go to NFPA 68. And uh, NFPA uh, 86 says that uh, thickness of uh, less than three inches, you need to install uh, explosion proof uh, or venting or relief system. Engineering examine the vacuum system to test if not carrying those into the system into the vacuum components. So this is very important. If you're carrying back, uh, those into in your vacuum components in vacuum system, you are in trouble. So that means that those things are not right. That, that means that combination with dust and flammable solvents, and flammable vapors, very very dangerous. So you need to verify that is you are not carrying that dust into that system. So maintenance check the grounding and the, uh, the grounding of the dryer, according to NFPA 77 recommended practices for extracting electricity. Also for this type of operations, so NFPA 30, uh, because we have 
fl flammable vapors at the beginning and in and actually in a in a very high quantity concentration so you need to go according to nfe 30 standard of flammable combustible liquids that specifies that the floor shall be static dissipated for this type of operations so at the moment of the incident the floor was covered by an epoxy coat so they decided to change it to a esd so nfea 77 they have the requirements how to inspect and uh, maintain a esd floor so uh, they decided to do every quarter to do the measure the resistant measurements on the on the floor currently uh, the um the XYZ company is, com is compiling the data or, um, that we described um, before for its intermediate and finished products. Engineering checked the electrical system of the equipment of the room and to be in compliance with the provincial electrical code. And that makes reference to the NFPS 70 National Electrical Code. It's regarding on classification of components. Um, zone one i mean a uh, cl class one zone one class one zone two or so uh, class two zone one class two zone two and um they found that some of the components they were not ex proof the safety department replaced all coveralls and gloves for the esd proof to avoid cross contamination and the reason uh, because that's the reason why they didn't accept the, the fire required and clothes uh, but um, my recommendation is no matter what um, so you uh, the, the, the clothes that they have people underneath of the coveralls uh, needs, I recommend to be fire retardant and obviously the coveralls on the top I understand that is uh, a GMP although they go into the ESD now I recommend to, to be protected and go to the uh, FR clothes clothing as well and uh, after um, the last day engineering install an ESD shoot tester and they look for the uh, for the certification of the of the bag because nobody could found uh, that bag was uh, ESD certified so everybody was assuming that was that was the ESD but no certification so they decided to change the bags to ESD as well um, thank you very much guys to listen to me to my videos um the reason why i'm doing that is because um i want to help the industry and the community and people who who is um who watch the curiosity to learn more about these these topics and avoid incidents uh, outside and as we said our mission is to protect people's lives and reduce incidents as well you can contact me you need you need more information about these topics at 613-464-0562 six one three four six four zero five six two and also uh, you can reach me on in any of my social uh, media platforms um, i have my youtube channel of pharmachemical safety i have my fa the facebook pharmachemical safety as well i have LinkedIn is sufficient um twitter is pharmachemical safety and that's the, the the platform that i'm that i'm on it also i have my uh, podcast so it's i convert this this video into audio as well in uh, audio also and then you have the uh, benefit to listen to on your car um so my podcast is in soundcloud or podcast um as a sufficient as a sufficient the same in uh, in in um in um itunes as well so you have an android or an iphone so you you are able to listen in both platforms as well Thank you very much. Have an excellent week. See you next time. Bye.